So what I love about this salad that I'm going to make tonight is that uh, it utilizes hearty greens that are readily available in the summertime when lettuce and spinach can't be grown in the hot summers of Indiana. So uh, anyone who has a home garden knows that it's really hard to keep lettuce going throughout the summer. These greens are generally cooked, but we can, with a few little techniques, we can make them edible when they're raw. Um, so I'm featuring some Swiss chard, again, it's so beautiful, and some flat leaf um, kale. This is a red Russian kale. This is my favorite because it is flat and it's easy to work with. And also beet greens, since we're gonna have beets in the salad. A little bit of a nose to tail happening exactly. there. So, but before I make the salad, I wanna make the salad dressing, and the reason is, um, I often make my salad dressings beforehand, sometimes the day before. That gives all those ingredients time to get to know each other after they've been jumbled in a food processor or blender. Um, so uh, because we are pairing this uh, course with White Horse Winery's Riesling, we wanted to stay away from a salad dressing that was too acidic or too sweet. So we chose a creamy dressing. Now my favorite creamy dressing is yogurt tahini. Um, it's a very versatile, easy dressing to make at home. Uh, you can use it as a dip, as a sandwich spread. You can even slap it on meat if you want to. And uh, it, it features tahini, which you all know is ground sesame seeds. Tahini is readily available even at the Kroger here in, uh, in uh, Crawfordsville. And in fact, right now, you can find this tahini in the clearance section of the Kroger. And I, I left a few there. See the little tag there? <laughs> <laughs> Be a mad rush, it'll sell out tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm going to start by putting some yogurt in my food processor and then a few tablespoons of tahini. It really doesn't matter how much. You don't have to follow the recipe exactly. That looks good. And always a clove of garlic and some lemon juice. Let's see, where's my lemon? And I'm gonna put a little bit more lemon juice. We wanna get that acidity level up. That's a nice juicer. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, tell them. It's, it's better than uh, Chef Rick's, that's yeah, for sure. it is better than Chef Rick's. <laughs> um, and what, something I add to almost all my salad dressings, whether it's a vinaigrette or a creamy dressing or, or whatever, is um, I always add apples and shallots. So the apples lend sweetness to the dressing and the shallot lends a pungency and together they add body to the dressing, which I really like. So an easy way to core an apple is um, slice it in half through the access and then use that handy melon baller that has found its way to the back of your drawer because who makes melon balls, right? <laughs> but you can take the melon baller and just core out your apple. It's much easier than trying to do it with a paring knife. And then I'm just going to put about um, a quarter of that apple in my dressing. And then shallots in there too. And whir it up. Oh, we need a salt. You know, one thing that people tend to do when they're making dressings at home is uh, skimping on the salt a little bit. And salt is really important. Your dressing should taste a little bit salty to you. So instead of putting uh, table salt in, I'm going to put soy sauce. That's going to add um, a really nice base note. Yeah, I, we should say that the soy sauce is not in the recipe in the book. That, uh, recipes are always suggestions, and, and Chef Lolly decided that we should add that after we had the book printed. So. Yeah, don't, don't use the recipe in the book. Just... <laughs> That's okay. kind of like Google Maps. It'll kind of get you there. <laughs> So I want to flavor this recipe with, uh, with this um, uh, dressing with my favorite herb, fresh marjoram. I feel like fresh marjoram isn't very well known. Um, people don't grow it. It's so easy to grow. And it, it's similar to oregano, but it doesn't give you that pizza connotation that oregano does. It has a little bit of a citrus note, a little bit sweeter. Um, I really like it in this dressing. So I'm gonna, I, I grow it. I'm going to put some fresh oregano in there. And then I'm finally going to finish it off with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And that's just going to fill in the gaps of this dressing a little bit. There we go. I'm not going to um, put that through the food processor. I find that food processors and blenders tend to make extra virgin olive oil taste a little bit bitter. So at the end, I'm just going to put some in and use my spoon to, to whirl it around a little bit. 
It's good. Yeah. Okay. Right. Put that over there. Um, Chip it on you know what? I need a bowl. Need a bowl. Huh? We need a bowl. <laughs> so now that my dressing is done, we're going to work on the salad part. So I went out to my garden this morning and I harvested some um, kale and um, Swiss chard. And what you want to do first is take the stems off of these. Um, it's, it's easy by holding onto the stem and just ripping off the, the leaf. It's a little bit harder with the Swiss chard. And then I'm going to make a big stack with my greens. It doesn't have to be perfectly stacked, but if being OCD and having it perfect gives you joy, then by all means do it like that. <laughs> but I am not like that in my kitchen. I have a very messy kitchen, so I'm just going to roll this big pile up and do a chiffonade, which is essentially shredding, right? And that's the first step in making these greens tender enough to be able to eat raw. So I'm just going to go with a very, very fine shred here. Thank you. <laughs> so clean. Okay. <laughs> so that's a small bowl, so I'm only going to do some of them. I'm going also going to just go down the middle because we don't really want a spaghetti salad. So we want those shreds to be really fine and also not too long. So I'm going to put those shreds in there. And uh, in the meantime, Chef Rick, <laughs> um, we put a bit of dressing in here, and then I'm going to ask Chef Rick to massage those greens. Those greens are getting really t <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Great. OK, next. So I wanted to feature two Indiana vegetables on this salad, beets and corn. I'm going to start with the beets. I just harvested these from my garden this morning. They're beautiful. So what I do is I make a nice fine dice, a little bit of olive oil and salt. And then I just put them on a, a roasting pan like this, 350 degrees for about 10, 15 minutes. Keep an eye on them because there's a lot of sugars in the beets that can burn fast. And when they're done, they're going to come out looking a little bit like this. See that? Oh, let me get the uh, yeah. super culinary cam. <laughs> there you go. I was excited. They let me run the camera. Uh, that's awesome. That, that's, that's a risk. <laughs> And then the next thing we're going to put on, of course, is Indiana sweet corn. I, I, I don't have it. Did, what? I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I, was I supposed to get the corn? Do you have the corn? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Well, let me look at my station. I might have corn. Hang on. Careful. Don't bend over. Uh, uh, I, uh, well, I got wine. Will this work? <laughs> well, let me, uh, Chef Tim was supposed to get the corn. Sorry, hang on. My sous chef. Uh, uh, chef, uh, chef Tim, thank you. Chef corn. Tim. Oh, they can't see it. Let me get the culinary cam on the on the corn. Yeah. Look at that yeah. corn. Cisco corn. That's Cisco what? Kid corn. What? It's the wrong corn. I'm not using that corn. <laughs> you said local corn. It's you Cisco said... Indianapolis. Okay. Um, no, I'm sorry. I can't use corn from a bag. I'm going to use local corn. So, just hold on a second. I'll be right back. Well, where, where, are you, where are you going? Where are you? She's gone. I, I hope she comes uh, back. Uh, I'm going to have a glass of wine. Yeah. Here you go, chef. She's gone. We can break into the cab. <laughs> <laughs> She's driving. Oh my God! Wow. I, she's moving really fast, man. She is fast. That's absolutely incredible. Hand selected, nonetheless. Look at that. Oh. God. That's the outside of the building. We're getting close. I'm glad you and I didn't have to run anywhere. Uh, uh, uh. There's God. I think. And, uh, there she comes. Lolly has. All right, Lolly has. Oh. Right. oh. Wow. 
Wow. Now, Jason, I'm just going to say you couldn't have done that that quick. I know. I, I, <laughs> you'll, you'll parched. Here you go. I'm yeah. winded. Yeah. There you go. Have well, a take, take a breather because i got to tell them about our next wine really briefly. Um, it, it is a Riesling. Uh, and as Lolly noted, uh, wines are not often served with salads because often they have an acidic dressing, right? This is a, this is a, a Riesling that is um, uh, more dry than off dry, right? So Rieslings can be very sweet. We think it works well with food for that reason. It's got a little nice fruit and, and it's got a very clear finish like most, many of the wines that White Horse uh, produces. So but, uh, now we can see how we can finish this salad. Okay, let's finish the salad. Well, fortunately, I had to stop at a train, so I had time to boil and shuck a couple ears of corn. <laughs> She's efficient. <laughs> so I really like grilled corn, but if, you don't, if you're not in the mood to turn on your grill and do all that, you can use your burner at home. Just boil your corn like you would for corn on the cob, and then take your ear and just hold it over your flame of your stove. Don't do it if it's electric. <laughs> Until you hear the popping of the kernel starting to char a little bit, it'll take about mm, five, five to six minutes to do the whole ear, and just keep turning it around. Blacking. It smells amazing. I happen to have a uh, fully charred ear right now. Wow, that's amazing. I know. <laughs> so we're going to plate this salad, the plate for the salad, yeah. right here. I thought you were going to have to run and get another plate. <laughs> So I'm going to plate the salad by putting the greens on the bottom. By now they're nice and softened. Perfectly massaged by Professor. <laughs> Some beets. I'm just going to cut this corn right onto it. And then finish it off with some crumbled goat cheese. Bam. <laughs> wow. Wow. Bon appetit.